Hi, welcome to DIY Recording Equipment. I'm Peterson Goodwin, and today I'm going to show you how to build a passive DI uh, for under $150. Uh, the great thing about these is that there's really only one component in a passive DI that matters to the sound, and that is the transformer. So if you've got a good transformer, um, I've got a good one here from Cinemag, but they're also made by Jensen, Souter, and Lundahl. Um, you're pretty much guaranteed to have a great sounding passive DI. Uh, that's how I feel about this kit, the Ferrite DI, uh, that I sell on my website. And this guide is for the Ferrite DI, but it also applies to any kind of passive DI you could cook up at home. So, let's get started. Parts and tools. Let's look at the kit. First we've got our die-cast aluminum case here with a mounting hole for the transformer, two hole quarter-inch jack holes for the in and through XLR output jack, and a hole for the ground lift switch. On the lid there's a hole for the ground connection to the case, which we'll do later. As a manual with the full kit transformer color code. And let's see what we've got in our bag of parts here. Why look, it's a Cinemag transformer. The threaded bushing allows us to attach it directly to the case with a really rigid connection. Two quarter inch jacks, one's for the input and one's for the through connection to a guitar amp. And a Neutric or Neutric male XLR jack. A little hookup wire for a ground connection and a switch to break the ground connection in cases where we have a ground loop. All right, what tools do we need? Not too many. We've got wire cutters, needle nose pliers, wire strippers for stripping off the plastic sleeve, soldering iron, solder of course, and a small Phillips head screwdriver. Assembly. First thing we're going to do with the transformer is isolate the red and brown leads and twist these together. These are the balanced pair for our microphone output and twisting them together can help reduce noise. Now we're going to put all of our jacks and the transformer in the case and stretch the transformer leads to where they'll need to be so we can clip them to the right length. You'll see I'm leaving about half an inch or so uh, just to leave some margin of error so I don't clip them too short. Too long is, of course, better than too short. And the black and white wires are going to be going to the lid, so stretch them to the lid. Now we're going to cut the leads that connect our input jack to the through jack. You can use extra red and black lengths from your transformer leads. And now the green wire that will go from the XLR jack to the ground switch. Now we're going to strip and tin all of the leads. Strip off about a quarter inch of the plastic coating for each lead, and then we'll tin it by heating the exposed wire and then dabbing just a little bit of solder on it to stick it all together. Now we're going to solder one end of the longer green wire to the ring terminal, which is how we'll fasten it to the case for a firm ground connection. Solder it in there. Now we're going to solder the other end of that same wire to one of the pins on the ground lift switch. Doesn't matter which pin, it's just an on-off switch. Okay, and now the other length of green wire to the remaining pin of the switch. This will eventually be soldered to pin one of the XLR jack.
Okay, that's it for the switch. And now the input and through jack wiring. These jacks have tip, ring, and sleeve pins. We're only going to need tip and sleeve since this is an unbalanced connection, so we'll go ahead and take off the ring pins. Red wire goes to the tip pin, black wire to the sleeve pin, and we're going to use the bottom of these pins, uh, the bottom holes, to leave room on the top for the transformer leads. And now soldering the other end of those wires to the through switch. We can use the top connections for this because there are no other wires that will be soldered to this switch. And again, red goes to tip, black goes to sleeve. Okay, there we go. Now we'll insert these jacks into the case and solder the yellow and orange wires to the input jack. Yellow goes to tip and orange goes to sleeve. Very good. Go ahead and fasten those to the case now. Now for the XLR jack. The first thing we're going to do is twist the gray lead from the transformer with the green lead from the switch. These will both be going to pin one, so we'll twist and solder them together first. Now for the XLR jack, I recommend taking a little different approach from the usual one and filling each pin with a little bit of solder first. Then when it comes time to solder each lead to the pin, what we're gonna do is reheat the pin to flow the solder in there, and then insert the lead into the molten solder, hold it there while it dries, and voila. The gray and green wires go to pin one, brown wire goes to pin three, and the red wire goes to pin two. Now the black and white leads I'm going to twist together and put into the remaining ring terminal. Solder those on there. And that's all there is to it. You just solder one component to some jacks and you've got yourself an awesome passive DI. I do have full kits for these available on my website. Uh, they've got this handsome silkscreen chassis and a Cinemag transformer. That's DIYrecordingEquipment.com. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has helped you and inspired you to get deeper into DIY audio. See you next time.